Bonjour tout le monde. Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be joining you here in Vientiane to start because this is the first time a Canadian Prime Minister has visited Laos, but also because we've had a highly productive time here at what is my third consecutive ASEAN summit, a summit made successful and possible by our gracious and welcoming Laotian hosts led by Prime Minister Sipandon. But before I get into it today, I want to, take, I want to talk about the fact uh, that our national pharmacare bill, Bill C-64, just got royal assent. This is a big deal and great news for many Canadians. It means free insulin is coming for every Canadian who needs it, ensuring that they don't have to choose between putting food on the table and getting the life-saving medication they require. And it means we'll be providing prescription contraceptives for free because we not only believe in a woman's right to choose, but we act on it. This is real progress, but now we need the provinces and territories to come to the table and sign agreements with us that supports Canadians and takes pressure off their household budgets as soon as possible. I've also seen the devastating images from the ground in the US after Hurricane Milton made landfall yesterday. My heart goes out to everyone affected by this tragic disaster. I know Canadians are already rolling up their sleeves, some there to restore power, others there to help neighbors in need. Uh, we are all thinking of our friends to the south. Today we're here in Laos because when we formed government, we made a commitment to invest in Canada's relationship in the Indo-Pacific, to invest in strengthening ties with ASEAN, because these relationships matter. They matter because in an increasingly complex and unstable world, strong partnerships built on mutual trust are the only way we can create a safe and prosperous future. They matter because we need to be skating where the puck is going. ASEAN is the fastest growing region in the world and plays a central, a central consensus building role, not just here in Asia, but around the globe. And in just a few years, we're all seeing remarkable results. Since 2015, Canada's trade with ASEAN has nearly doubled. And that didn't happen by accident. It happened because our trade ministers, particularly Mary, has led many successful trade missions to the region with hundreds of Canadian businesses. Most recently to Malaysia and Vietnam earlier this year, and with the Philippines and Indonesia coming this December. It also happened because we have deliberately built up our presence and leaned into the right relationships. Collectively, ASEAN is now Canada's fourth largest trading partner with almost $40 billion in annual trade. This means countless new opportunities for Canadian and ASEAN businesses alike. It means more community-building, middle-class jobs on both sides of the Pacific. And it means access to a wider variety of goods and services at affordable prices. That's real progress that our people can see and feel. It's not just me saying it. As one ASEAN leader said directly to me this week, our relationship is hitting levels beyond anything we ever aspired to. Comme je l'ai mentionné avec nos partenaires de l'ASEAN durant le sommet, ce progrès n'aurait jamais été possible sans travail et les efforts constants année après année, sans les relations que nous avons cultivées, sans le leadership que nous avons collectivement démontré et finalement sans le sincère désir des membres de l'ASEAN d'avoir le Canada comme partenaire stratégique, un partenaire actif engaged and present in the region. But the work is never done, and this year is no different. At the conclusion of this year's summit, we released a joint statement highlighting, among other things, our work together in the digital space, recognizing that Canada is already a leader in AI and other technologies that will shape the 21st century global economy. I have to pause on that for a sec because it was extremely exciting to see Jeffrey Hinton win uh, the Nobel Prize for Physics for his work developing AI earlier this week. I actually uh, called him from a refueling stop on the way over and uh, was uh, you know, extremely excited uh, to see not just what he's been able to do but the thoughtful approach he has on making sure that AI stays focused on serving 
uh, citizens and building a better economy and not necessarily uh, on, uh, on you know, destabilizing or, or, or hurting people. This is work we need to stay, uh, stay on. Quite frankly, the fact that Canada is in many ways at the origin of modern AI is something that we should both step up on and make sure we're continuing to build on. Uh, in my conversations with ASEAN this week, I pointed out that AI is going to be incredible as a leverage to build success and opportunity, particularly people who have uh, so much need for economic opportunity and growth. And that's where Canada can step in and be a partner with communities and countries like here in ASEAN uh, as we work on technology that's going to make a huge difference in the lives of millions of people around the world. Nous investissons et concentrons nos efforts à protéger nos nations contre les conséquences de plus en plus dévastatrices des changements climatiques, notamment les sécheresses, les inondations et les feux de forêt, tout en protégeant nos océans dont nous dépendons tous profondément. Nous nous appuyons sur des initiatives comme la création du premier bureau agroalimentaire canadien de l'Indo-Pacifique à Manille pour partager notre expertise et bâtir une industrie agricole plus innovante tout en luttant contre la faim dans le monde. On the world stage, Canada is working with ASEAN on maritime safety, cyber security, the prevention of transnational organized crime and terrorism, and enhancing the rights of women and girls across the globe. And we're working towards the conclusion of a Canada-ASEAN free trade agreement, a Canada-Indonesia free trade agreement, and the expansion of the CPTPP, all of which will promote inclusive economic growth and development that strengthens the middle class in our respective countries. But these aren't just words. We're taking action. We're investing in projects to fight climate change and protect the environment. Like the Lao Monsoon Wind Power Project, the first large-scale wind power project in this country, and supporting the Mekong River Commission to protect a vital driver of economic growth for millions of people. We're addressing global security challenges by providing training to combat cyber threats from malicious actors. We've stepped up on our military and security partnerships, including more deployments to this pivotal region. We're enhancing our energy cooperation, particularly in nuclear power and in renewables. And we're upgrading our offices in Cambodia and Laos into full embassies next year, meaning that we will soon have Canadian embassies in all 10 ASEAN member states. Encore une fois, je tiens à remercier le Laos de nous avoir accueillis pour ce sommet. Et je tiens à remercier tous les États membres de l'ASEAN pour leur engagement continu pour établir des partenariats solides avec le Canada, des partenariats qui apportent de réels progrès à nos citoyens aujourd'hui et pour des décennies à venir. Merci beaucoup d'être ici.